I feel like I got a great podcast energy right now. You got great podcast energy? Yeah. Okay. So, this is Seventh Helix Podcast, the podcast where we ask, what does that even mean? That's what somebody told me to say. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> uh, I'm with Zan and the Winter Folk. I'm going to let each of you guys introduce yourselves because it works a lot better than if I try. I mean, I thought we were you going go first. You're Zan. You, you go first I, I, in the time. Yeah, it has to go Zan first, I think. All right. Yeah. I'm Zan Strumfeld, and I am the singer, songwriter, guitarist of Zan and the Winter Folk. I'm, I'm the Zan, which confuses people sometimes. Yeah. We've been asked. So. Uh, my name is Michael Gregg. Uh, I'm a 27-year-old Caucasian male, height 6'2", <laughs> weight 205, and I play the five-string banjo in Sand in the Winter Folk. Thanks for that update. I don't think that's all you do. <laughs> <laughs> my name's Will Brown. I am the guitar player, or lead guitar player. And Zan and the Winter Folk lead. Also, aspiring professional gambler <laughs> in my yes. mind. <laughs> and in my heart. And brother. on the doorstep well, of 30, I hope to make it a, a real goal you're also, in this new decade. You're also a professional burger time player. I can uh, frequently hit uh, second place um, on, the, on the Franklin Alley burger time machine. We can yeah. talk about that later if I you'd think, like. I think we should. I think we should talk about games. Will is also the treasurer of the band. The treasurer? Um, and, and he gambles? And he's the gambler. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how that really I just found out Rivers <laughs> Casino cashes checks. <laughs> Is that so? Uh, I am Mike Jenkins, and I play the bass. Bass fiddle? guitar, bass fiddle. Bass it, fiddle. Whatever you want, I guess. Uh, in Zan and the Winter Folk, I am also Zan, along with these guys. They're also Zan. We're all Zan. We're all Zan. In spirit. All Zan. Yeah, we're all Zan. Who, who has been confused for Zan? Me. Really? I, I really? think people, when they meet me, they're like, oh, you're Zan. And I never really understand that. It I is just, a very uncommon name, so I can understand yeah. why you wouldn't be sure. I think right. we should rotate who's Zan when we perform. <laughs> wouldn't you think that the singer would be Zan? I don't know. Yeah, the singer like, is Zan. We went through a phase where we were changing our name like every time we'd yeah. go on stage. The original name of the band was Zan and the Whiskey Dicks. Yeah. But we were afraid about booking like, <laughs> really public like library that. gigs. That's still the name of our group chat. That's still the low key band name. <laughs> it's upsetting. Yeah. But. No, it's great. Well, it's, it's, I it's not. I think you should not have family f- friendly. You know. You should have a Finsta called the Whiskey Dick. Finsta. I just you, learned what that, that is. What, is that? what <laughs> a fun <laughs> phrase. <laughs> It's like us, and we have a problem. Our Finsta has surpassed the band's yeah. Instagram in a all very a short amount of time. 2,000 followers. And has very different kinds of pictures on there. <laughs> That's what all the kids are doing. Yeah. The right. Finsta. I, I the definitely Finsta. wouldn't know about I've, that. I've long had trouble getting with what the kids are up to. I believe that about you, Michael. <laughs> is it okay if I call you Michael and you Mike? That, that is work? what we ask people to do yeah, for the Yeah, we call him Jenkins, actually. Band. Jenkins? Jenkins is fine. Mike. Mike is fine. If you had sound effects, I would hit the alert, alert, alert. <laughs> yeah. It's like you I hit was, the nail on the head. I was hoping I think, you were going to have more of like a morning radio setup where you did like you were hitting the air horn all the time. <laughs> yeah. I should I get caramba. a button like that. I mommy. Do I strike you as a as a I caramba no. type person? <laughs> but I think you'll get there with some yeah. practice. So you guys got together when? <clears throat> 2016? Um, 2017 in September. 2017. Okay, So it'll cool. be two years actually coming up. And um, I was a solo performer for on and off for six, seven years. Mm. I put out a record in um, the summer of 2017. And then we were at, I was asked um, to open for a musician at Jupiter Hall, which is like, um, it's a venue in the mall, actually. You know you've made oh. it when you're playing the bowling alley in the mall. <laughs> and right? so I looked, I looked it up, I googled practice, it, and practice, I was like, practice. I am not playing this place by myself. Um, so Jenkins and I actually go way back. We played together on and off for a few few years before that. And Will, I just knew was a great guitarist. So I asked them both if they would play this show with me like a week before the show. Oh, cool. And we did. Uh, we practiced, and the night before the show <laughs> i called michael because jenkins was like I, there was, was, it me or was well it you? you suggested think, it yeah i think it was like, one of the songs that, that, that goofball in this michael had been playing banjo at that point for how long well, well if that was in september we I, were we were playing a little bit together before yeah we that. had we fooled around like, a little bit but like i i bought a banjo for my 25th birthday so that would have been april 25th of 2017 
And so through, I guess, three or four months later, yeah. You, so one oh, wasn't very good. One of the songs we were playing, Jenkins was like, "You really should have banjo good on man. here. You should call Michael." So I called Michael. It was literally twenty four hours before the performance. Kind of pissed too. Yeah, like he, it was a, a nice. Fr- it was a Friday night. No, it was like seven o'clock on a Friday you into night. It. I was like, "You're gonna yeah, do this." We were Don't sitting be... out in the backyard having a nice time. And I was like, "Do you want to come over and learn a couple songs for this gig tomorrow?" He's like, "I don't know. I'll call you back." And he hung up on me. <laughs> And then maybe one minute later, he calls me. He's like, all right, I'm on my way. What? And, there was, <laughs> and we basically learned, all of us learned about five songs together, played the show the next night. And we've all known each other for a long time. I've been friends. And I don't know. I, I don't really remember how we basically were like, when do you guys want to get together again and play? I, do you remember yeah, what it was happened? Just, it was enough <clears throat> of a, an established little routine, I would say. Because, I, I mean, how long was it that I played those songs? Maybe a, a week and a half or two weeks Yeah, tops? it wasn't like, I really thought it was going to be this one-time gig. But then they were like, well, we should get together again and play. And I was like, oh. So that. you two had known each other. Jenkins and I have been playing when I had been here. like was I, 2012? Yeah, the, when I graduated from college, together? I lived back home for one year. Okay. And Jenkins and I played together. How did um, Will get in? Will is just, uh, he's a guitarist. I actually know Zan through Olivia Quilio. Oh, so. No, you know me from my brother when we were like 15. Well, yeah, through him, then Olivia. And y- yeah. you and Olivia came into my life together. Yeah, so we, and Will's <laughs> playing, he's a, he is a guitarist, mm-hmm. and. We've yeah. known each other for a while. And a long time. Yeah, over, it has to be like 12, 13 years at this yeah. point. And, and I know these guys, dude. and I know <laughs> Mike and Michael too. I mean, we went to high school together. I'm yeah. I'm the oldest. Um, Jenkins, well, you were going into ninth grade when I was graduating. I think something like that. I but know. No, you were going, I was going into ninth grade. You were going Talk about a no, Troy you were band. The same, yeah. You were the See? same, you I were the same you. age as, uh, <laughs> you were in the same class as Wyatt. Yeah, yeah. You, you presented me with the coolest freshman award, Troy High. Yeah, you are the Troy Van. Yeah, he hasn't. He hasn't. Two thousand seven, baby. So we've all known each other. Bigger sense. And yeah, so essentially after that show, we were like, well, let's let's play again together, again. And then um, we weren't. Was our next show in? It January? was Cafe Lena. Yeah, yeah that, in that's January. What, yeah, yeah, so our very next show was, was a, Cafe was Lena. Cafe Lena. Yeah, so September two thousand seventeen, yeah. Jupiter Hall, Crossgates wow. Mall. We just keep on getting together <laughs> for, you know, once a week. Yeah, we literally for three months, a, three or four months, and then Monday Cafe night. Lena. Yeah. That was pretty that was pretty wow. cool. Wow. Holy so crap. So that's kind of our origin. Yeah. So you were playing before that. Yeah, so on I your I, own I sort of established so myself long. as in some way from the capital region, but just in general as a musician. So that Cafe Lena wasn't like the most random thing for us to do, mm. but as a band that was brand new, it, it was pretty amazing. Also, spoiler alert, we are not Zan's first band because I remember seeing uh, at uh, Bread and Jam in Cahoes, rest in peace, or was it more Bread and Jam at that point? Yeah. But uh, yeah, Zan had a killer <laughs> band and on her first album release show. I put out an album when no I was like Winter 22. Folk, of just a bunch of random local musicians. But you're wrong because the very first band I was ever in was called Captain Kip and the Ramblin' Zans. Man, that's cool a great you can cut that's that a great out. name. That's cool a name. great Vuvuzela name. Vuvuzela sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was in college. Name. It was a great name. So yeah. So, cool. yeah. Um, so you guys are like folk, I would say. Kind would of. you you're say kind of, that? I'm always curious. Well, never, here's, here's the question because uh, you don't have drums. So that puts you in the bluegrass category in a way, you know, because you're kind of, you guys. I'll object to that, but I'll let you finish. Yeah, uh, that's what I was going to say. Like bluegrass, bluegrass typically doesn't have, or a lot of times doesn't have drums. I think if you walked into a bluegrass festival with anything larger than a tambourine, you'd be in trouble. Yes. Yeah. But you usually have other, like a banjo is a great example. That is a, it's, it is a percussive. percussive Yeah. What is it if not a drum that somebody glued a broken guitar next to? Yeah. It's kind of a hybrid, just like you, Michael. (laughs) (laughs) Bam. Got him. Got him. (laughs) It's a perfect instrument. Um, But uh, from your perspective, I am curious because when somebody asks, when I, when uh, somebody finds out I'm in a and they say, what kind of music do you play? I, I find that that a hard, difficult question to answer because I can give a long-winded answer about like, well, we have a female singer-songwriter who you know writes a lot of songs that is sort of in the vein of like a you know, like Joni Mitchell is probably your biggest influence. Mm-hmm. Or, um, but then the band sound doesn't you know. We're I, we're I feel like we're not folky enough to be called folk, but we're certainly not a rock and roll band. Right. I would say it's and Americana. you're not really bluegrass. Yeah, but no, I, said I play the banjo, because, but it's not a. Yeah, I we, said bluegrass just because your percussive instrument right. is the banjo. Yeah, I say we have a lot of slashes. 
yeah. like that folk Americana indie. I say bluegrass just to add in because people want to hear that, but I put in all of those slashes because I think that's what people need. Yeah, I um, think it's almost inevitable for a band today, because if you're a singer songwriter, that's got its own category. You can call yourself that. Mm-hmm. But once there's a band, I don't know how to describe any band that uh, that is playing locally. I don't know how. Yeah. I don't <laughs> know exactly what you can't you can't peg them. In a, you know. I, yeah. think I don't know. I think the Zucchini Brothers fit pretty <laughs> solidly into the children's <laughs> music category. Fair. I agree. <laughs> Concur. I think that's one reason I've always, I like playing in this band because everyone sort of brings a different type of sound. Like, I think my foundation is folk or like a sadder, heavier folk. Um, but like, Michael really loves like... Bluegrass and old time music specifically. So I'm not like... A bluegrass player would object to m- even me categorizing myself as a bluegrass musician. Right. You know, I am much more of like an old time. Right. I, and then we're getting into the esoteric details about five string banjo styles, but and Mike plays with gypsy jazz. Yeah, you're so a like, jazz cat you, through, well, through, through, right? <clears throat> um, yeah, no, I do a lot of that, and I really love to play jazz music, and especially swing. Mm. I do every Thursday night. I'm down at the Speakeasy Five One Eight doing a swing dance. Yeah, yeah. I really Promo. love that stuff. Unofficial um, sponsor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, before, you know, I was rudely interrupted. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, that's it, it definitely, as Anne said, you know, we all bring a different style to the table, and that really kind of adds the flavor to anything that we do. You know, I mean, as, as, as we are, you know, I mean, with the electric guitar, it's a little bit different, but I would say, you know, we could be pretty much a modern bluegrass band, a new grass band, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it, it, like that's, that. that's how it kind of like, like, that's how that, that style how is, reacting. you know, and you know, our first EP though, we did have a yeah, drummer, we had a drummer. It, and yeah. like, we did a drummer. and we with, love our drummer. We with, miss our drummer. Brenda Tompkins. We love you so much, brother. Can't wait to yeah. see you soon. I can't, I guess yeah. I've li- I listened, I've listened to that album. I just, yeah. I think I just, what I think of you guys playing live and I see the four of you. Yeah. 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 And that's why we like kind of came back to that. It, that was really fun. Cause that was about a year ago so and we, I mean, we were just saying we had our round like auditorium show was a year ago yesterday. And that was a really amazing show. Um, I don't for me personally, uh, last summer, and then having Brendan, I think like with the drums, you could be like, oh, that's definitively like an indie folk rock band. Yeah. yeah. Um, but with the four of us, I think it is more of a, it is hard to describe. We all borrow elements of all these genres that we've said, um, but it's sort of like, you just got to see us. Mm-hmm. And then to kind of make your own opinion. Sometime. Drink <laughs> it up. Yeah. I, re- I really like want the intimate feeling. Like, I feel like we have a lot of like... I want us to be able to play a living room show in front of everybody, I yeah. guess is what I'm trying to say. So Don't playing play with drums that. was amazing, and I really loved it. But we weren't able to always do that. Um, and it was it's just a different – I like trying those different iterations, <clears throat> but I feel like we finally sort of found our groove. It took a long time. There is a mix because you, you – I'm guessing you write the lyrics mostly, mm-hmm. if not all. Yeah. All. And you have this sort of uh, pulling at your heartstrings type – uh, style, you know, like <laughs> it's like, it's like. Do you use the word melancholy? Because everybody does. I don't want to <laughs> use that word because because there's an optimism in it. God. You know, it's 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 harsh a little bit. It's hard a little bit, but it's honest and it's it's not just negative. You know, yeah. there's it's optimistic. That's why I don't want to use op- sadness. Melancholy just sounds like, oh me, I'm mm-hmm. Eeyore. <laughs> but, like my yeah. favorite. <laughs> 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 We definitely but, borrow some elements of Eeyore. Yeah. Stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, but Will, Will, you bring in more rock. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. like, I mean, I love love rock music of all kinds. Um, but I also did like go to school for like classical guitar where mm. I was just playing by myself a lot. Um, and I had been out of playing gigs um, before I played in this band. And I would have never thought this would be like the band that I would be in right now. Mm-hmm. But it's amazing, and it's really interesting too to be an electric guitar player in a band without drums, because it's like I'm really trying to borrow elements. Like I think of myself as like a keyboard player, yeah, um, and try to just fill the empty spaces. And you know, yeah, I have some effects, but I'm not like drowning things and like delay all the time because it's just that wouldn't be tasteful. I just try, and that's been like the interesting thing. And I have been this band has made pushed me. To learn more of like, you know, sort of like bluegrassy stuff, some folk stuff, but on electric guitar, 
I don't know. There's just a lot you can do. Yeah. It's a What's electric guitar is I, an amazing instrument. I What's the it. line that I told you when you first started playing with me? Keep it simple, bitch. <laughs> It's, it's it's interesting because like I, I would guess maybe traditionally the the bass player would be connecting the drummer to the guitar in a way and to the rhythm. I think of the guitar it, in, in this way. in this group it's more more the banjo. I would say it's like banjo is is, is almost snare drum bass. Yeah. With your style, you play more of a claw yeah, hammer. Yeah. So I play claw hammer style yeah. banjo for those of you <laughs> listeners who don't know what that is. <laughs> I tried uh, to learn that. Like I think what people th- when you say I play the banjo, you think about Earl Scruggs, and it's like that's like a three finger picking that is like hello scout. She's very bluegrass. <laughs> scout snout is sneaking up my pant leg right now. <laughs> um, that's a nice bomb. <laughs> um, but like uh, uh, that style of banjo is percussive in its finger picking, whereas I am really using my the back of my index fingernail and my thumb to sort of do like a bum ditty rhythm is like the standard rhythm. So the, what's more like a drum than that? A boom chuck a boom chuck a bum yeah. ditty bum ditty. So that connects know? us. Together. And there, are, uh, as I've grown as a banjo player through this band, like I can do a lot more than that now. But um, yeah, it is sort of like a consistent rhythmic aspect of of. So, you, so you're the time. rhythm. You're kind of well. Well, con- t- together. I guess well, that's that's the whole difference. Together, mm-hmm. as as opposed to what you're thinking, the guitar is the snare drum to my bass drum. Okay. Do you, do, yeah. Does that make sense? So this is yeah. this is what's happening here, in that in that sort of sense. In in in, in bluegrass, a lot of the time, the mandolin right. is like the chop with the chop mushroom. But with this with the style that that Michael plays, it it, it it lends itself a lot to almost a little bit more like that. You know, especially mm-hmm. with your your stylings mm-hmm. um but yeah you've definitely i mean yeah, i'm a lot better than i was when we you are a lot better game. than you were man yeah <laughs> but he was really good when he came along and i think that needs i to think be that's yeah it is. Uh, i wasn't I'm saying like that he said, he said it himself he said it himself when i we when i the it. first time i saw you play i would have assumed you'd been playing it for much longer when was what was the first time you saw us play it might have been like a superior show. It might have been. Yeah. It might have been a superior show. What, it's hard outside, for me to and I gotta outside. say, for Michael, his dedication to at like every day, his practice time, he like makes me want to play the guitar because I know he's putting in the time. Seriously, yeah. I'm yeah, not even has, kidding. Blush a, over there, buddy. Do you have like a, a calendar update that's like practice banjo uh, every day? Yeah, no, there would be. Just we'd like, have band practice, and at ten o'clock there'd be an alarm that goes off, <laughs> and then it's like that's the practice banjo alarm. Yeah. For real. Well, I like to, I want to get good at it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. playing the banjo was something that I really wanted to do my whole life, but I never really had access to one. There was always a guitar around, and I was like a shitty guitar player for ten years. You know, I could, I can hit cowboy chords like now. Like I, I am the world's best John Prine cover band. Okay. Honest to God, I'll say that on the podcast. <laughs> uh, but I'm, outside, I'm need proof. Outside of playing guitar like John Prine, I can't really do much. You know. Um, Would that but be it, appropriate time for? <laughs> <laughs> Um, but like uh, just the second I picked up a banjo I'm like oh I've been playing the wrong instrument my whole life and this Mm. makes so much more sense to me and I can do so much more with this than I can with the guitar both as a solo instrument to accompany my voice and as a a member of an outfit so you grabbed the banjo spring of 2017 spring of 2017 and what your birthday's in April? My birthday is April 25th, 1992. Oh, wow. Your birthday is six days after Snuck month. in there just before Clinton <laughs> swept the White House by storm. You're a Taurus. I am a Taurus. Yeah. I'm, I'm the last, what of it? I'm the last Aries. What of it? Okay. Uh, I don't know what that means. But, I don't know. What, where did you <laughs> did get you your Did you consider banjo? that for a podcast name? Um, <laughs> have you heard <laughs> of <laughs> internet.com? Oh, you bought it online. <laughs> no, I didn't. Um, so College City Guitars, I have long had a relationship with the, the, our dear friend Peter Fisher down He's there at College City Guitars. I'd like him to come um, on the podcast. And I expressed him. Uh, yeah, I bet he would be a good podcast <laughs> guest, yeah. Um, taking time away from not fixing my guitar. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but uh, I expressed an interest in him, and he had a deal. He was a Recording King authorized dealer at the time, and they made some pretty decent like student instruments. And I was like, I find me a banjo that is like not a thousand dollars, but like I can learn on pretty well. And he got me one, and I just had, couldn't put the thing down to the point where I, what I didn't even wait a year before I sold that thing and bought like a real ass banjo, you know. A year earlier, I had I sold my banjo to him. Interesting. What kind of banjo? Oh. I don't know. It wasn't. Okay. A it, was a re- it wasn't. A recording you game. definitely didn't that buy that. That would have been really banjo. weird. Right. <laughs> uh, no. Spooky, spooky. <laughs> I tried for a summer 
and I just I'll teach you, brother. I I just I just I'll try to again. learn bluegrass style. I tried to learn claw hammer. That was really? I picked. That's what I picked. But I just I've been playing guitar since I was fourteen. It is such a different motion, and I couldn't like um, I couldn't break the habit. Yeah. You know, my fingers just did what my what they do on a guitar. Mm-hmm. They didn't want to. They didn't want yeah, to listen to me because it, it's you got to be looser in the because it's this a lot. You know what I mean? Loose in the wrist. That's a gift, right you there. Know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you say that. So I work at the Troy Public Library. Maybe six months ago, they installed cameras in the Troy Public Library, <laughs> and I like to practice when my super. Supervisors leave for work because there's not. Oftentimes, I'm just sitting in a room by myself. They don't want me to play the banjo, but what else am I going to do in there? But I recently found out that when you look at the security cameras, the way the desk is positioned, all you can see is me <laughs> moving my hand in my lap up and down, up and down. I don't, you can't I, see the neck of the Jesus. instrument. Or anything. I don't think they like that even. They oh definitely. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. They're checking your internet history. Well, they get wiped after what? 24 hours, I think. <laughs> and on, I, I got them over a barrel when it comes to employment. Like, what are they. Okay. I hope they don't listen to this. <laughs> it's Ooh. fine. Scout. 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 No, I get it, man. The world's a scary place. The world is a scary place. <laughs> That's remind me I of have... James Brown right now. Those, you don't those... exactly hide the playing the banjo at the library. You put it on Instagram. Yeah, <laughs> but that none of them follow yeah. me on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> what are they going to say? Don't, don't show know. up we to work tomorrow? We hate joy. Don't play an instrument. Yeah. <laughs> it's a civil service job. I'll be fine. Yeah, I bring my guitar to work sometimes. Yeah, why not? Fridays. Fridays. Casual Fridays. <laughs> Casual yeah. Fridays. Do you guitar. sing to your coworkers? Yeah. <laughs> what do you sing? Um, I don't know. Whatever I'm into that week. Fuck yeah! <laughs> <laughs> nice. I like yeah, style. I would like. You I don't would hunt like them with any eagles by any chance. Oh, do you? Yeah. <laughs> save, save that for part two, really. Yeah. <laughs> Why you want to play some eagles together? We could if you if That's you wanted to. Thing. Sometimes have you we watched the three-hour documentary? Is on the Willie's eagles? love of the eagles? Because yeah. we that all was early have. on in the in the band time when yeah. I watched the Eagles documentary and had my life changed forever. And then we all watched it too. Yeah. How long is this documentary? Four hours. Three. Three. Yeah, it's hours. two. It's, it's two, two hours hour and a half. What is it called? Kill it's me called. Now. I don't Will know. won't shut just up about <laughs> this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. What was it? Just, just search was it? Eagles. It was on Netflix, on Netflix at one point. What was it about the documentary that got to you? Oh, uh, I mean, it was just cool. I just loved. Like, I never. It's an in-depth history of like on one of these all-time like bands. And then, like, I love their songs. Frankly, I learned to love their songs through it. And, like, I just love talking about them, especially in front of these guys. That's cool. <laughs> He's lying. He's just super horny for Don I... Felder. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm a Glenn Fry guy. Yeah, yeah come on. I do. <laughs> that was the experience I had watching This Is Spinal Tap. I was just, you know, oh, man. Yeah. just totally inspired. You wanted me. to be in a fake yes. metal band? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, though, Zan has, uh, <laughs> Zan was at one point telling us to watch this Avid Brothers documentary, and I still haven't watched that. that Ooh, sorry, Zan. I like Hey, them. I sure have watched a few clips of that documentary <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> I love their new song. Yeah. It doesn't bad. sound like them. It doesn't. I've heard it about, like, probably... 20 times on that wasn't like a dig at 97.7 or 106.1 right. that wasn't a dig at their sound I liked their sound before that it's just was, yeah, you want to give me when I heard it I couldn't believe it was the Avid Brothers yeah I no, really like it I like it too that for me maybe <laughs> oh Should man we, you edit this right I'm I, happy that I, we got I a local music to. or a radio station well, like that's if a friend I, of the Avid Brothers I don't want to interrupt to like pause for can you give me two ice cubes you know <laughs> nobody wants to hear that well, it doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah, Willie, will you give me two ice cubes? It's it can <laughs> be it come. can be tough to edit. It's tougher to edit the more people that are on because if there's no pause. Oh yeah. You know, I, there's no. There's. I should have wrote a piece of paper. I meant to start my little alarm. <laughs> <laughs> so I can tell you, cut this Michael's out. I shouldn't have me, said that. He's gonna send me an email with yeah. like. Well, if we want to continue on the train of in- the musicians train right that we're now. interested in, I am a huge James Taylor fan. Like, okay. yeah, we all do bring a our like very specific James Taylor fan. Okay, so, so I'm you're you're wearing a John Prine shirt. Right I am now. wearing. A, that's yeah. my guy. That's your you guy. Know? And I, James I, Taylor's his guy. The Eagles is his guy. The Eagles. I guess. I, I guess in the past in the. In the band, yeah. Okay. 100%. What about you? I'd say say Laura Marling is my guy. Laura Marling? Yeah. (laughs) Oh, interesting. I haven't listened to her in a long time. Yeah. Oh, she is really good. Yeah. She is really good. I'm going to listen to her tomorrow. I do have a a playlist where I'm anybody who's on the podcast, so you each get to add two songs to it if you want to. Oh, wow. Waka, waka. What a treat. (laughs) Well, I hope you're ready to... The idea just of being it would be a a random playlist made by lots of different people. Can we do that public? Because I would listen to that. I'm I'm still waiting on Candy Ambulance to give me their songs. 
but okay. yeah. I can give you, you a number right guys. now. <laughs> I can give you a number right now. Also, while we're doing this, I would be remiss if I didn't say that uh, Randy Newman is also a genius. Oh, yeah. I love Randy Newman. I'm a big Randy Newman Let's fan. Let's talk about that for three hours. Which, guys, the, get lost. Which Randy so, Newman So, good album. old boys. That's the one. Uh, <laughs> That's the one. Good old boys is the... No, is, I mean, they're all my... Good Old Boys is probably my favorite, but I, I think 1999's Bad Love should be getting more good love from <laughs> audiences everywhere. There's a lot of great tracks on that one. I, uh, when I, because, you know, everybody knows Randy Newman from Toy Story. Yeah. Uh, and just Pixar in general. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when we I We all like to make money. Why yeah. do you think I work at a public library? Right. <laughs> but when I, heard, when I heard Good Old Boys, I was like, this guy, this guy is a musical a genius. genius. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He, Not even a musical genius, a regular genius. <laughs> <laughs> Just a regular. Uh, yeah, kind. I mean, is a musical genius lesser than a regular genius? I think sometimes it is. You know what I mean? Like, interesting. I do. Like people call Bob Dylan a musical genius, and I think that might be fair because he revolutionized several different genres of music or whatever. But I mean, I you know. Is he the world's smartest guy? I don't think he is. You know what I mean? That's true. Uh, but I think Randy Newman is as intelligent as he is uh, gifted as an artist. Yeah, but there's people on the other end of that who are super intelligent who, like, can't tie their shoes or, like, can't tell a joke. You know, like... All right, I'm on but, your pocket, man. Like, be nice. Uh, uh, um... You know, it's funny you say, has anybody read the New York Times Magazine this weekend? Or am I the only Ivy League liberal elite in the room? I didn't, I did not. Um, <laughs> uh, Go a, on. There's a, great yeah. long, <laughs> there's a great long article about, I believe the title is, Neil Young's Sad Lonely Quest to Save Music. And it's like a long <laughs> profile of Neil Young Jesus. and his... Um, you, uh, you guys know what Neil Young's been doing with the. He invented some music player and he's yelling at us all for using Spotify and he wants everybody to uh, listen to, you know, super big audio files that don't lossless. lose any. Yeah, lossless. Thank you. Um, and it really. I don't know where I was going with this exactly. But Neil Young is both a musical genius and a regular genius in that his records are great and he is so thoughtful about every aspect of of the music in uh, to the point where I think it hurts him you know mm-hmm. he seems like I love Neil Young but he seems so angry and sad all the time he you does know? and I think it's because he just can't let stuff like that go and I think it's because he thinks so much about it that's true do you think without it he would have the fuel to do it though I think no he probably needs I don't to be know. he'd probably just sit around on that yeah. farm right or whatever he does he's an interesting guy though <laughs> yeah. Neil Young's an interesting guy the lossless thing is kind of interesting too, because when I was in college, I got really into vinyl, mm-hmm. and I started. Li- you should, we, I went to college. Yeah, <laughs> but you uh, ever heard of M Ward? Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah, I love M Ward. One of my favorites. He had. I read this whole thing he put about recording and analog. He was big on it. I don't think he is anymore, but he was really big in recording and analog, and it was like, oh man, that's really cool that there's all these different sounds that get in there because you're you're you're, you're working with an actual wave. Whereas with digital recording, it's it's an impersonation of a wave. It's like, you know, it's very good, mm-hmm. but you know what I mean? So I don't know. The whole lossless thing could be a way to bring that back. Yeah. I, I, to bring it back to us for a second, I, I think. Sorry. <laughs> no, I think that was my fault. <laughs> um, but I, I, I think that is that's an interesting way to think about the difference between the first EP that we put out and the last EP that we put out. You know what I mean? The, the first EP that we did, we tracked everything individually, and it, w- it was very constructed in a way. You know what I mean? And we thought about vers- – uh, and the EP that we just put out, um, it was just the four of us in a room recording everything together, mm-hmm. and then we're just fixing little things and picking the best take, you know. And that's that's the type of record that I like to listen to myself when I I want to like the example I think of is is like Bob, Bob Dylan's Blood on the Tracks when you can like hear his jacket buttons clicking up against the back of his acoustic right. guitar when he's playing and like I love that kind of thing, you know. That, that makes me feel so much more connected oh, to that's a record. Cool. That's a, I like uh, both for different reasons, like yeah. Pet Sounds. Beach sure, Boys. which is the exact opposite. It's, it's the exact yeah. opposite, and yeah. I love that album, too. Yeah. You know, I just like them for different reasons. Speaking of the Beach Boys, how did you guys pick that to cover? Uh, oh! Uh, I mean, I, I just 
I love the Beach Boys. At I first, we all thought that, it was a right? good song. Yeah. <laughs> it is a good yeah, song. Yeah, I came to – that was like a week before our – we had a, our EP release show for this last EP we put out in June, and I – like a week before, I was like, guys, I want to do this song, which I, I feel, as you were just describing our music, um, that – people need a break sometimes um with something just very light and a little more uplifting um mm-hmm. which i get even though i feel like our songs are masked with a lot of i think the banjo actually helps make some of our songs sound like they're brighter than they are they do um but a cover is it's nice to give someone just like okay here's just like you can remember that things are okay uh too um so and i i love the fact that all, th- all three of the boys uh sing very well so i like being able to exhibit that so beach boys have this incredible harmony obviously and um we learned it very quickly i mean it's a very easy song especially if we know it so um i thought it was perfect too because uh when we played it at our release show we played it right after our song alone which has a line once in a while i worry and i was like okay how can we follow this up with baby just don't worry baby. oh that's perfect yeah so it is a great moment when you guys play that song it just feels nice. It's, yeah. You know, everybody knows the song. Yeah. It feels a little it more like a sing along. And I like, like I've I never so yeah. I've never guys. seen anyone cover it. You know, there's like no. there's go to songs that people always cover and you're like, oh, this is great. But like yeah. it's it doesn't um, choosing a cover song can be really challenging because you're like, how can I do yeah. something to make sure that it still sounds like us? It's still something that people aren't sick of hearing and that we can do it interesting without losing its original sound. Almost yeah. no one covers the Beach Boys. Because they're really hard. Yeah. They're extremely hard. Because we had to change that key like five times. Because <laughs> Brian Wilson was a genius. Because he was a, he was a genius. <laughs> and Carol just he genius. was probably a regular genius. He was genius a regular too, genius yeah. for sure. Um, I actually just rewatched um, Love and Mercy, which is this incredible biopic on him. Um, really dark. Have you, ever, have you guys ever seen that? I've not. No, Perfect no. example of a genius who can't function in other ways. Yeah. Like he can't. Yeah. Just couldn't couldn't live life. It's yeah. too hard Continues for him. To, didn't he just cancel it to her? Yeah, I actually uh, saw Brian Wilson at um, the Palace a few years ago, and he it was really hard to watch because there were a few times he would just walk off stage, and the rest of the band continued without him, um, but they killed it, and like they were amazing, but it, it was really sad. I do feel bad using the past tense talking about the guy, but I feel like his... It's not really Well, he there. just canceled it too. I, I feel so. like his time... Yeah. I think he did do any drugs or something. I don't know. Like, just... Something's not right. How well, old is he, he has now? like he major has schizophrenia. A bunch of mental oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. You should watch. Have you seen Love and Mercy? No. It's a great, like, easy way to get into Brian Wilson. Ooh, without John Cusack and John Paul Cusack. Dana both yeah. play him. Yeah. And it basically just like he had a slew of mental illness issues that were misdiagnosed and nobody knew. And then he was on a lot of drugs by the wrong kind of doctors. Plus, um, his father was an asshole. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so. Didn't his father hit him in the head with like a two by four or something? Something like that. They were pretty. He. He wasn't yeah. too far off from like a, the Jackson father, so it's. Uh... Anyway, Love and Mercy is <laughs> available for borrowing at your local public library. Go to thetroylibrary.org so, yeah. to reserve your copy. It's today. not rude if I Wikipedia Brian Wilson right now. I'm really. We try to pick no, our, do it, do it. We try to pick our covers accordingly. Like, and that's interesting too. I always ask everybody. Like, we try to do a lot of things democratically. So you know, like, does anyone have any recommendations for? covers and luckily we've played a lot of different shows where we either had to learn covers or we did we actually did a john prine tribute show so we have all these john prine shows that we yeah, have Cafe yeah. Lane. yeah yeah That's we started my, my dad has never been more proud of me so l- last that year was so fun. last year yeah. was our our real first year as a band and we started and ended at cafe lena which was very cool for us and really meant a lot really cool. yeah so the yeah. john prine tribute show we played was the very like the second to last day of the year yeah it was the 28th and we played with like so cool. s- I think six or eight bands. Yeah, there's a lot of bands. Yeah, there. and we, like some four. great, great like, artists. No, no I think no, six. No. I think because it was two. Because we all did four songs. There was, was at six. least fifteen musicians there. I think it was eight bands, like two sets. It's wow. it's okay that we don't know the details, I mean, but there were some <laughs> we great to, people there. Oh, you know what? You're right. Yeah, it was eight. And we had to learn four John Bryan sh- songs, which we basically let Michael choose because you know that's yeah. his man. He's, and he's the John Bryan. Um, what are your top John Bryan songs? Oh, that's a hard question <laughs> for me. Well, I'll oh, tell you, boy. the two that I sang at the Giant Prime Tribute show were uh, Late John Garfield Blues and Far From Me. Cool. And then Zan yeah. sang Angel from Montgomery and All the Best. All the Best, which I love All the Best because it's um, literally like, I really want to wish you all the best, but I hate you, so yeah. good that's, luck. That's in our regular rotation. <laughs> yeah, though, so that's that what's kind of cool yeah. is we bring a lot of them back 
into our well angel too i guess but that angel, one we made yeah. our own i feel like we yeah. really angel yeah. Yeah. that is, is a of, perfect example of a song that every single yeah. person who's ever picked up an instrument covers yeah. at one yeah. point yeah. or another so we choose know. it we <laughs> choose it accordingly <laughs> yeah, if it makes yeah. sense we just played a bar the other night that it made sense to play that song because <laughs> yeah. the people that were in there would have wanted to hear that yeah song. it definitely made sense and they did and and they were screaming for Bonnie Raitt. So yeah. uh, Michael yeah. and I were both soaking wet that night. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Yeah, the rain has not been kind to us. But yeah, no. yeah the rain has that been vicious fun, this though. past yeah. week. We're a rainy band, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we have had, had a like few four, rain four down. or five rainouts to date. So did you did you say Jesus. that? Yeah, sorry, I should probably close that door. They're just gonna. <laughs> no, 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 I, no, I, I dig the energy. A moth you dig the energy with the moth. I love moths. Oh, it's fine. You got a big spider like Browns. I don't have a big spider like Browns. I had nightmares about that. That was. I don't want to talk. <laughs> it was really funny that there's this For amazing show. For you listeners show. out there, on <laughs> Thursday there's night this, we were all at concert. These incredible musicians on stage, yeah. Yeah. like putting on an, a great bands. show, one of the best bands in the area, and, and everybody's watching a spider build a web and kill flies. Well, because <laughs> we're watching it build, and it then all of a sudden intense, you see like a moth really go into the, the web, and then the spider run to the moth and then like just wrap it up, and we're Spin all it like, it's National Geographic, and it was... Damn, yeah. Where's Snoop Dogg when you need him? Oh, damn, Nature, you crazy. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Holy shit. All, all I could think of is, like, this working class dude. Who, like, he gets up every morning and he, like, goes and does this thing. And it's like, oh, this is yeah. just this is just my life. Who, I build the spider? It. I, yeah. I, yeah, just go, I just go build. I thought you were John Prine. Prine. No. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, he, maybe that was John Prine the spider. He, like, gets, he gets up. He, like, he builds his Build web. Builds some songs. He runs around and gets as many moths, and then he goes home to the wife. And it's like, wow. yeah. actually, I think those were female spiders. I think that, yeah, I'm going to have to correct you on that. Because, I think that was a female spider. the male spiders are smaller. <coughs> they were smaller, and yeah, they were trying right. to impress her, which yeah. I understand. The so. female does the work. Yeah. And eats the men. Yeah, I understand. And that, that speaks well to our band dynamic. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say the EP release show was the first time you played Don't Worry Baby? Yeah. 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 Because that was a good moment. I remember being there. We were in the back. And when you started playing that song, it was just a nice moment. If It was like, oh, this is perfect. This that, is a perfect cover for them to do. Yeah. It felt great. That release show for us, too, was a very special day because... It's a cool show. It's... I think we don't normally play shows where we either ask people to pay to come see us. Um, and this was specifically like, come pay to see us. <laughs> and I was like, guys, I don't want to do this. Or like, we're doing this. Yeah. Um, and it's it sold out. And then it was like spilling out of the room, which was really overwhelming. And um, just the energy in that room was I, I don't know. I, I've never seen so many happy people, which, you know, for listening to the sad music here. But it just felt like everybody, like, really wanted to be there and just um, our... I feel like everything went right, too, because we were doing our... Bringing in yeah. the sound, and we are just, like, yeah. dialing this in. It was a cool show, too. And usually, I mean, you guys had it so that you were facing out. Mm-hmm towards the alley yeah, I bought a that. ticket I just ended <laughs> up in the okay, alley but <laughs> that was really cool I was going to ask you about that yeah. no, I was out okay. with the spillover people but no, I did buy great. my ticket I know it's fine <laughs> out, out with the cool we crowd we checked the, the list <laughs> okay Jim we checked the list yeah. this guy uh, it did it, it, we felt very um, really loved that day yeah. um, not that we don't normally but that was like a really yeah. a beautiful and I mean that's that. a place where we all have breakfast every day anyway. <laughs> yeah I know so. I saw uh, you there today. Yeah, <laughs> literally. <laughs> there. I saw you there I yesterday. Think, I think on, too. Right? On Sunday? Uh-huh. No, no. Was it Sunday or Saturday? Yeah. Well, I gotta like do a check in there, you know, to yeah. figure out what those people are up to and what what do I need to buy at CVS. To it also <laughs> be seems to back be, home. especially at the farmers market, it's the place where everybody meets mm-hmm. up. Just yeah. To, just the. See how that, I, are going. And that's one of the things I love about the city of Troy is I know that on a Saturday, if I go sit at an outside table at Little Pex, I'll find something to do today mm-hmm. by mm-hmm. running into somebody. You yeah. Know? You'll mm-hmm. see at least three of your ex partners yeah. and yeah. 10 of yep. your friends. There's that. Yeah. <laughs> how many of those ex partners have songs written about them? Wow. That's a question I just cannot answer. Uh, I can tell you right now, I had <laughs> breakfast at Little Pex with one of them on Saturday. <laughs> Uh, well, I, 
it's good you all are still friends. Yeah, no, you got to be. But yeah, that, that question is always really funny. My mom especially. She loves that question. If I, <laughs> if I send her a song that I write, um, she's always like, who's this one about? And it's like, come on. Did you know it by now? It's not. It's not yeah. how. Maybe it is. you're just an intelligent woman who's writing uh, like Randy Newman from a character's perspective. Yeah, I actually. I yeah. It's not all. Do the great people point, about Michael. No, that is about them. I think there has been sp- specific things that some people know. Um, I did have a. <laughs> God, I had someone come up to me a few years ago, and they were like, "Was this song written about my brother?" And it was, which was <laughs> weird. Uh, but it was about like an alcoholic, so I understood. Um, but. Okay. The <laughs> um but yeah there's never like there's they're not always like specific uh circumstances or people um but sometimes just moments or multiple moments brought together um but yeah yeah (laughs) because you're you do have a lot of songs about heartache i feel like that has been when i at at least in the past have been more inspired because i tend to become i I do like like a shell in and i become way more isolated Mm -hmm. um and i think that has a lot more to do with it than anything um we connect better on that level too i yeah. feel i feel like we connect better with other human beings in sadness you know in the yeah. <laughs> in like the tough things that we get through yeah, i get well, a, that's yeah. when you're most longing for connection yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and i get a lot of a lot of people are like i so relate to this song and it, usually it's one of the ones that have like the saddest lyrics or the darkest lyrics or whatever and it it makes me happy and sad to hear that yeah. i guess um because i want that connectivity but i also don't want someone to feel that way but I also want to feel that way with someone else so you don't feel as lonely. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have kind of a weird question that I've been wanting to ask for a long time. Because yeah, we go to the it. same gym, but only in the winter. I only go in the winter. <coughs> and I saw you there before a show, before the Linda show. Oh, shit. And I was like, I wonder if this is di- if today's different. Because I knew you were playing later because I was going to go. I went to the show. And my thought was like, is it different today? Is it like... What do you mean? Is what different today? Like, if it's a regular Saturday and you're just like, oh, I'm going to go to the gym. But if it's like, oh, I have to go to the gym before my show, is it like that? Is it different? No. no? Definitely not. It's just routine. Yeah. And so I, you know, it's funny. Life, I don't normally go to the gym on Saturdays. So I don't know. That what must day have been a, was. no, but if it was a Linda show, uh, that would have been weird. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. You go to the, I, I, you yeah, go to the, y. I go to the YMCA. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Um, <laughs> That's I only go to the gym <laughs> pre-show. <laughs> they got great racquetball courts. I, uh, I've been told. That's funny. I, I, I don't really YMCA. remember that. Yeah. That certain gym experience, but you were on an elliptical, <laughs> and I was like, I was go I was like, on. like I wanted, I wanted to go up and be like, good luck today. Oh, thank you. But I also was like, maybe I shouldn't do that. I kind of appreciate that because at the gym, I really don't want anyone talking to me. Me I'm too. in zone and like I don't look good and I just like the last thing I want is to be talked to. Um, but Same. you can tell it to me now and I really appreciate I hope, that. I hope that the Linda <laughs> show nine months ago goes well. <laughs> it did. It went really well. I think that was we, – we had a lot of fun that night. But, yeah, no, there's no – like I'm not like if I don't work out, I can't play. It's not a thing like that. But It's not like the routine is a big deal on that day? Mm-mm. That's probably good. I feel and like I, I would have that problem. I'd be like, today matters. I have to stick to the routine today. It's weird that you even say that because uh, when I um, when we were driving to our gig this past weekend, it was one of the first moments where I was like, oh, it's a Saturday and I'm like going to play a gig. Like we've been doing this for two years, but for some reason this weekend was the first time where I was like, this is like, it's not a normal thing that people do, I mm. guess. And in my head, it's just like, this is what we do. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you ever have that weird feeling? Like, Yeah. I, I just don't think about it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that routine that you might be asking, like, do I have to work out to feel, you know, a certain way? It's like, no, because in my mind, it's like, I don't even think about playing a gig as yeah. the thing. I it doesn't even have to just be working out. Like, in my head, I know if I was playing a show, I, I don't know. I feel like I'd be like, this is what I do on Saturdays. It works for me. I have to make sure I do this today. No, this I have <laughs> different types of OCD, but not that kind. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, like, so no. so so the day of a show is just a day. I might have used to used to I used to need to like make sure I had time to myself to like kind of chill, but mm. now it's it's really just a day. It's part of life. I would prefer not to like have a whole day of work after waking up yeah, at six yeah. in the morning and then go and play a show at two hours away. I don't do want to do that. It's funny because now talking about that that day, while you guys were at the gym together, I was like at Window Mountain working, and right. I worked all day. And it's like I lo- I work at Window Mountain on some Saturdays during the winter time doing DJing stuff. But this was the hardest gig, hauling a speaker up like 
a little bit of a slope. Right. And I, it was just like a, it was like a tough day. And then driving back, you yeah. know, and then doing that show. Yeah, that and show. And those are like definitely in my mind not ideal. Like if you got a good a show that you're really looking forward to and playing. That not was one of my ideal. favorite shows. Not I love ideal. That show. Yeah. But so, everything went well still. Yeah, yeah and that, so that, that show was with Bell Skinner and Girl Blue, yeah. and that was like um, the Siren Songs yep. show of all the. We played that, the three of us played together at Superior, which I know you were at mm-hmm. um, solo. And uh, Matt Plummer, who runs the Linda, came up to us and was like, we should put on this show together. Um, and that was, I think, one of my most favorite shows. What do you guys think? I don't know. That's yeah, I had a blast. I mean, it was. Th- I've never seen that many people in the Linda. One of my favorite was- moments was at the end. The three of you went up and sang, and the mic stopped working, and everybody just that. got really quiet. And it sounded really cool. The mic stopped working. Yeah, yeah. And everybody like wasn't shut working, up. And everybody so shut up because they were like, "Everybody, shut the fuck up and listen <laughs> to this." <laughs> it was a cool moment that is really cool what did you guys sing uh we sang wayfaring stranger which is like um we did like the jenny lewis cover (laughs) but that's like a pretty old standard um that uh maria had picked out i always wonder about that because it's hard to get people together there's no way you had time to practice we practiced twice actually and it worked out um and i'm not gonna lie i was a little intimidated because they're both like professional like not perfect we are all professional but full-time long-term musicians and i feel like i was coming in but i think all of our voices blended really well together and they were all very different completely agree um yeah that was beautiful that was like the first time i really got to like sit and hang out with them and feel like oh you guys are also just people and i you're not just amazing musicians like you're ladies and yeah we really bonded (laughs) that was the first time i saw bell skinner's band Mm -hmm. play which was kind of cool i'd only seen her play alone before yeah what a very cool same here yeah yeah (laughs) yeah they were cool very very cool yeah that was a great show so the linda the cafe lena shows in the linda are they are they top shows for you guys and then your ep release i don't know uh we played like yeah 40 i mean those shows are top last shows year for sure. definitely top shows but i feel like we've had a lot of even like not big shows that were some of our i feel like all of our shows that we i don't know what, what was one of your favorite shows do you i mean definitely last year definitely around this time at round lake yeah, yeah. round lake yeah, auditorium round was such a beautiful do you know what time. the round lake auditorium no. is so Round Lake is like by past Clifton Park, right? It's I know where like eleven. Yeah, exit eleven, and there it's like this little. I would you'd never know it exists. Like it originated as a religious town. community, right? Or yeah, something like that. So like all the houses have this like uniformity of design. But they're all big. Vic- no, they're Victorians yeah. and like Victorian homes that are all painted like hot pink or yeah. baby blue it's like become like, like an artist community yeah. Lake, but Lake they're Holmes. beautiful and they Lake all have Holmes. these like kind of these big lanterns around them and everybody hangs out together and all they're all artists they don't even know this town exists and then they have this like big auditorium in the middle of the place and it's massive and beautiful and um we took photos there with our beth michelonis is our photographer and she brought us there to take photos in like the dead of winter. It was like four months before. Yeah, six it was months like before something I think it was like March. It was like freezing. In it there. was very cold in there. And uh, she, like uh, they. I think the, we were all sick. Yeah, it was. Or just, I was. It sick. was horrible. Just so, tissues it was so handy because it's like yeah. Hey, give us and then one we second, played. Let's all blow our nose. <laughs> yeah, my and then we'll take my nose is pictures. so red in these photos. Uh, <laughs> and then we played in the dead of August. It's the dead of heat was so hot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but it's, it's such gorgeous. a gorgeous cool space. It's like a yeah. church in there. There's, there's like a giant, the craziest looking organ right behind you yeah. as you're playing. That's like cool. A real, yeah. It's kind of neat how that keeps happening. These um, spaces originally for religious uh, Yeah. Gatherings Especially are, in a town like this where yeah. we got a bunch of unused churches. Right. You know? Instead yeah. of them just Might as going well have unused, a show there. they're, in a way, it's, I mean, in a way, it's a new religious experience type thing. Yeah. It's a new, like, communal thing for people to do and... You know, dance together, sing together. You know, it's a yeah. I mean, like that cool. show we played the other at the church? what's the name of that church? The church, but what the is church the up on fifteenth or twelfth? Yeah. I think they just called oh, yeah, that uh, church. Yeah. As my dad put it, the last the time we were here, we put Eddie McDonough in the ground. Uh, what, what about you? What's your favorite show? Um, it gotta be Crazy Dan's Metal Emporium <laughs> no. Curiosity God, Show. Yeah. What? 
Uh, where I got food poisoning from a bad <laughs> octopus salad. <laughs> and oh my god! Why do you eat all time? I want to answer your question, but it's important to know that for some reason your routine that you're talking about. <laughs> we're gonna go back for a second. Michael's routine is to eat the worst kind of food for digestion <laughs> right before he performs. And then drink, <laughs> drink a I bunch of shitty say, beer. We played the River Street Pub. I think we went on at like eleven. One of the last shows ever at River Street. Yeah, Pub we got on at like shooting. eleven o'clock Rest at night. Power. We've been there all night, and then at like eleven fifteen, Michael's like. <laughs> We're in the I middle have, of sound check. I have to go. <laughs> I ne- it wasn't like, uh, guys, I should really go to the bathroom. It's like, I need to leave right now. And Will lives around the corner, and he's like, I'm going to take Michael home with me. And everybody left, and I'm in the middle of sound check, and it's because Michael had to shit his pants. Will and I didn't go to the bathroom, but, you know. Yeah, and so that happens. Did you play they came back. But yeah, Michael does that a lot. So <laughs> he has soup before he performs. Like, all of these really. I mean, I just ate a large pulled pork fan before I did a podcast. <laughs> me too. Yeah, yeah. Me too, though. That was delicious brisket. Uh, Glad you guys like That's not going to get you sick, brother. <laughs> What he's referring to is we went on tour, uh, our very first time on tour. We did a 10-day, four-state, northeast winter tour, which oh. um, was awesome. We rented a car named Bertha, 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 Bertha. which Bertha. I feel like most people What kind need. of car was Bertha? Uh, a minivan. A okay. minivan. Remember, Dodge remember when I dented it a little bit? And, I, and I was like, let's not get the now? insurance. And Zan's Dude. like, we're getting oh, the we... insurance. <laughs> and then I We then also then got I pulled over just, in it. You know, no, we didn't even get pulled. We were pulled over. We were pulled over. Yeah, yeah. We, we so we went on tour for ten days with a, a friend of ours is a Floridian musician and he had um, a band with him. So we did a caravan, which was so cool, like to take off work and just do this lifestyle. Um, and one of the places we stopped in was New Paltz, is where I went to college and started. Wonderful. Yeah, and that's where I kind of like came into my like comfort as a musician. And I played every place to play there. That's and when I was booking our tour, none of those places still exist. Which was like deeply upsetting to me. You know, I noticed that because I, I hadn't gone to New Paltz in a couple of years and I went a couple, like maybe two years ago. Yeah. And I thought, everything's different. Different and not replaced. Like they didn't replace any music venues or bars. Like there, there's nothing. So the only place when, that. When was that? Maybe there is now. This was December of 2018. There was no. There was, I thought there was like a yeah. coffee shop there's that like has a guitar two, store in yeah, it. Yeah, there's two. No, that doesn't exist anymore. It's gone? Yeah. That guitar store moved. So, yeah, no, and that's the thing. So the only place that we could find to play was called. I believe Crazy, Crazy Dan's, Dan's Metal Shop and Curiosity Emporium. <laughs> yeah, Curio- yeah, yeah, yeah. Which CD I, was I, also. I, I don't want to make it clear. I fuck with Crazy Dan like that. A good dude right there. Crazy and Dan's double M, man. Double M, and double M. Yeah. So this place was literally like. Have you ever had a closet in your childhood bedroom? <laughs> <laughs> That's the size of this venue. But it was be it be like Except, it literally. Did you have a signed picture of Jake the Snake Roberts in your <laughs> closet right. bedroom? There was there was that at this yeah. place. So this place, like Thanks I think it was like his. That. I think he lives on the other side. It's an apartment. It's right on the main street. But then there's like a the storefront yeah. that has like back. a room that's probably like yeah, his literally opens eight up by eight. Into a feet. I am going there on Saturday because I'm going crazy to New York Dan. City and there I'm going to stop. On yeah. The way. Yeah. Stop, so stop. It's literally like eight by eight. Crazy I'm going to. Like you would call it a hole in the wall because that's what it is. There's literally a hole in the wall because they do metal shows in there and someone was body slammed into the wall. <laughs> they do metal shows in this tiny little yeah. venue. Yeah, it's like and people are nice probably guy. the same square footage of this room, but um, long and narrow instead of square. Yeah, really, would you? yeah. And is so, narrower than yeah. this room? Oh, twice yes. as narrow. You got it. You oh, should go. So we go before we play. We walk into the place. There's eight of us together. Oh, there's seven of us together. There's and eight with Dan. This is like Dan. day nine of tour. Like yeah. we're a little worn out. Yeah. So there. So seven of us on tour. Eight Cold. with Dan, and we fill the room. <laughs> Yeah, and the, we're like the musicians are we're at capacity. I mean, like up, <laughs> we literally have an upright bass. It's like where are we gonna put it right now? Like it was yeah. crazy. So before we play and try to decide what we're gonna do, we go to this Japanese restaurant around the corner, and Michael, which was really good, which was really good. Fuck we were you, all you got fine, octopus salad. But for some reason, Michael, <laughs> there's no bathroom in Crazy Dan's Metal Emporium, and there's a mobile that's a few streets away, and Michael just kept leaving because apparently he just. <laughs> <laughs> Three times, I think. I would say, do not order the octopus salad at the one Asian restaurant. Oh, in but anyway, it wound up being an amazing show. It was super intimate. There were probably intimate, about yeah. 25 people in there. Damn. And that was packed. It was packed. packed. It was hot. More than packed. We played yeah. acoustic. and Yeah, I played uh, our buddy Matt Fowler's pretty beat Yamaha. 
It was the first time you electric, were at, uh, which was like cool. a Rest in power, Matt Fowler's Yamaha. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to jump into it right away, but one of the things that's the most fun about seeing you guys play is your banter on stage. You guys have a really good banter on stage. It's just, it adds a lot of fun to the experience cool. of seeing you guys. And obviously, Michael is a big part of that. <laughs> He's upset when he doesn't get a microphone. What are you so. saying? <laughs> No, but it's funny. It's like you guys are you guys are genuinely having a fun time, a good yeah. time with yeah. each other, and you're giving each other a hard time in like a uh, <laughs> kind of way. You yeah. can tell your friends. It makes it. It takes. There's pressure on an audience too. You there's know? so much pressure yeah. on the audience. There's, there's, and I'll uh, give it to them. But <laughs> <laughs> it takes the pressure off the audience. Which is why I say that I want to do that like living room intimate show for all audiences because it's like at the Linda show I remember feeling like this could be really scary because there's 200 people here because when we played we played the Linda a year before pretty much to the day and the entire time I was so nervous that I like blacked, oh, I was scared I blacked out too, yeah because it was and they like still play that show on the radio yeah and it wasn't <laughs> we did not do a good job and I remember just being I like, don't know I don't we probably did but I, I just, uh, we could have I done a better job but I remember that we whole did, we oh, did good okay we did we did good. well actually it's well you did well yeah excuse me <laughs> but that's talking to well. a librarian and a book editor right now man watch the yourself. whole the whole time we your book editor i was yeah when we really yeah i didn't know that yeah Got i had a business jimmy it's called uh, zealous scribbler i do uh, would you edit my book we can talk about it yeah yeah <laughs> her rates are very really competitive <laughs> um but yeah, um, don't read it though, because I'll be embarrassed. <laughs> Just edit it. <laughs> <laughs> don't Not the weirdest request it. I've gotten, actually. Yeah, our a lot of people come up to us and ask us if our banter, if we practice our banter, which I always find really funny. Um, because I mean, in we, a way, we do. Well, we yell at each other via text all day long. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, and that's then we like get asking, together at night and yell at each other in person. Yeah. <laughs> do you practice being friends? I mean, yeah. sort of. Yeah. I hang out with them. Yeah, yeah, that's a. It comes off. It doesn't come off as contrived at all. It no. doesn't like. It's very real. It just. Thank you. It seems like you guys are just having a great time. It's funny because when I was playing a lot by myself, I was essentially doing that banter, but to no one, and it mm. was just really hard because I was trying to feed off the audience, and the audience, it's a lot of pressure to put on. People don't want to answer. They don't know how to answer. So I would like ask a question, and then they wouldn't know how to answer. And so I think. When we first started playing, I was the only one that had a mic, and I would still do that. And it was like, wait, we should all just be talking to each other. Yeah, it's and it's tough. so much more comfortable. It's tough to let loose in the audience. Like when you're in an when you're in an audience, nobody wants to be the first one. Yeah. To start, you know. It's you know like what you're I mean? scared that you're like at like a magician's show and someone's gonna call on you. Yes. Ex yeah. And or you're, or like, yeah. you're gonna start <laughs> dancing and no one else will. Yeah. You know, like, but the truth is, it just takes one person to start doing it. Yeah. And but you guys take the pressure off because you just you're joking around. It feels like oh they're just friends. I'm I'm friends with them too. That's you know, it. You're not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are. You nailed it. <laughs> I think you should wear the cowboy hat. Again. <sighs> I really didn't want you to bring it up. Honestly. I love that cowboy hat. <laughs> I, I like it. I like it too. The funny no. thing is, we played a gig this past weekend, and the band before us had the same outfit on. He did. Really? You he don't was, like the did. cowboy hat. I don't he wasn't wearing it at first, and then he brought it out. Like and he was I, in a black t-shirt, black t-shirt, black, black pants, shows. and black cowboy right, hat. Michael, you got Same my back. Thing. You got my Hell back. Hell yeah, brother! Um, I, I have a light colored cowboy hat. I would like to wear at the same time you wear your black yes. cowboy hat. Oh, okay, sweet. I think we could do like a. Yin Will's gonna wear it. Do it on Friday. Friday, Friday of Fedora. Eastbound Throwdown, brother. When we're playing right, cool. there. <laughs> I don't mind. I don't mind the hat. I think it's it's funnier to make fun of it. But I think I'm wondering if people, as soon as we walk on stage and there's a cowboy hat, what are people's thoughts? That's my only. Country question. music, That's what's baby. So fun about it, though. Yeah. You know. And you I, should you should make, just keep wanting up one upping it. So next time wear <laughs> cowboy boots. Then oh, he's got then a polo oh, he's tie. been I'm doing hoping, that. I'm but hoping uh, to get. I'm hoping to get some boots. Add spurs at some point. Oh wow, Spurs! We'll see. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> Maybe a Spurs. horse. You know, he, he does favor <laughs> actual horse. Ride the horse on stage yeah. while you're playing guitar. Yeah. He favors the bolo tie at formal occasions. That would be yeah. so yeah. great. Yeah. Bolo, bolo, bolo tie is put it out there. A thing we, get, again. we play rocking on the river. I show up for loading on a horse. <laughs> 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 like, <laughs> <laughs> hauling your amp behind yeah. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. gonna have yeah. a lasso on your belt at some point yes yeah. yeah you should lasso the audience you might get in trouble for that <sighs> but that, that, that could be part talk of about the pressure answer. on the audience brother you know <laughs> <laughs> can't get away with that anymore <laughs>
Okay. We did we did we complete the influences thing? Because you were saying James Taylor. You said John. <laughs> no, Prine, I don't know that we and did. And we didn't continue. Oh, oh wow, God. you remembered. I the did question? remember. Yeah, yeah let's. Well, I wanted back. to talk a little bit. So, like James Ta- James Taylor, when you said that, because I know a bunch of people who are very influenced by James Taylor, and I have a weird relationship with James Taylor because my my parents listened to him, and I as a kid, I, I I don't know if it was because my parents liked him, I just couldn't stand his voice. It just bothered me. It bothered me. Maybe it's just because it was like a rebellious thing. But yeah. because so many people were telling me how like influential he was, I started listening to him again recently. And I was like, oh, wow, this is actually really, 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 really My good. mom loved James Taylor and would always put that on. She would. My middle name is actually James. My first name um, is Sweet Baby James. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she would always sing that shit to me. But <laughs> but, but I, I love I, that. I feel like that's how I learned how to sing. And I think. You know, together, Zan and I have a great, a, a a great dynamic singing together, and that's just how I feel like I learned how to sing. And whenever I feel like I'm not like, oh, I'm not really, not really singing too good these days, <laughs> you know, I'm like listen to some James Taylor and like, not like, how sweet is not like that, like that that shit, but like the the real, you know, like September grass or like you know, like the real like James Taylor songs and. Yeah, I've been listening to him a lot recently, and I've fallen in love with him. What's your favorite James Taylor song? My favorite song? I have a favorite album, but I can't remember What's the name of it. Oh, come on. The dog. I'm really One Man, dog. One man dog. One That's man my dog. favorite yeah. album. Yeah. So Which I turned all these motherfuckers on to. Say that. What? Because I think I had a similar relationship with James Taylor that you did, which is... I understood that he was a respected songwriter and a great musician and a great like finger picking guitar player, but I was so bored by him every time I heard him when I was a kid. Like it just was Snooze City. I didn't have any interest. And then you, Mike, who I'm pointing at for your listeners. Oh, oh I didn't know. That was um, me. Stop, played that stop. played that one man dog record for me one time when we were hanging out, and I was like, oh my god, like so this good. is a whole nother level of. Yeah. I love this. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That bought, that album really like. It, it like changed my life listening to that that's shit. That's funny. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. I, I fell in love with that album. I'm, I suck at names of things. I suck at the name of the album. And when it's I listen, it's a picture to it, of him with him on a boat with yeah. a dog. Yeah, yeah, one man dog. Yeah. yeah. And I suck at the name of songs too because when I listen to music, I usually just, I just put the record on, and I just listen to it. That's and I common. don't, you know, yeah. I don't like. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's um, the great thing about records. Yeah. It's like you don't have to like do that. And that's like you were. We were all that's talking what about Neil records. Young's been yelling yeah. at me about in the New York well, Times magazine. Well, <laughs> well, that's like we're going back to like, especially <laughs> in terms of jazz. Like, I think he, Michael was like Michael was really the first person to like. He would he would like uh, make me playlists like CD playlists in high school and stuff like that. And and we had this good friend Dave Hunter who actually turned around to Gregory Allen Isaacoff, which I know Zan That's loves. Right, yeah. so I love much. Gregory Allen Isaacoff. Yeah, so Dave amazing. Hunter in town this weekend. Oh, I'll is find he? Him. Oh, where? All right. Well, I'll find him somewhere. I won't try to contact him. But, but like, it, it all goes back to that stuff. Is like finding people that you like vibe with on this genuine connection. Like, you know, especially Michael. Like all these. There's so many songs that like I had learned, especially from Zan too. It was like. Jeez, just like changed my whole world and like the 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 James Taylor thing. I'm like I don't, I don't I'm not a very articulate person, but I think that was like my contribution is like yo check this out, man. And I found <laughs> it at the beat shop in Troy. Yeah. Like there was just like a record. I was just like oh man, I love the album cover. It's like James Taylor. I I the guy said it was like mom music, which I love. Mm. I'm like, I'm like, mom. yeah, I'm like, I do. It is though. Yeah, it is mom music, but I'm like a mom like. kind of person. <laughs> um, well, I have that relationship with like Springsteen, you know? Like, yeah. Every, every time my mom set it out in the day to clean the house, she would put on Bruce Springsteen's mm-hmm. Wild, the Innocent, and the East Street Shuffle. And just like I would like, put on One Man Parade. Every time I sweep the floor, what do I put on? Wild the East One Shadow. Man Parade is the way to yeah. go. Like yeah. in that whole album, there's this one yeah. track. The first track is, um, uh, I'm sure you, I don't know if you've listened to it a lot, but there's this one part where James Taylor's like, fuck yeah. <laughs> He's saying something. <laughs> it's just so, it. it's, it's just, just so, it's it just, it feels, kind yeah, of out yeah, of no, point. you listen for that on the first track of the album because it's just like, I listen for it every time. I'm like, <laughs> yes, I'm like, fuck yeah. <laughs> That's great. I don't know if you guys know this, but, well, my full name is Susanna, and I was named after the. James, I didn't know that. The James Taylor version of Oh Susanna. 
That's what really? I was named I after. didn't know that. Wow. Actually, I didn't know that. Wow. Wow. That's even more connected. Right there. Yeah. James Taylor brings more everybody specific together. James, than you yeah, ever really said does. before. <laughs> What's the James Taylor version? There That's it cool. is. I, uh, I have a guitar inside that was my dad's, and um, it's called the Gurian. Which oh, I saw. I was admiring that guitar earlier, and I look forward to playing it. When Go we for it. This it's, up. The, the, the strings are very old. I don't play it very much. Okay. It's a little warped. It's like not perfect. But yeah. um, so that that was a Gurian made made guitars in the late seventies and early eighties, and they were handmade in Vermont. And James Taylor used them yep. for a while, and that's why my dad bought one. And uh, I brought it to Collar City a couple times. They're frustrating to gu- to guitar people because. They break all the conventions, but they sound cool. Mm-hmm. So it's it's like it's like those composite It's very guitars. interesting looking guitar. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. it's got a very small sound. Yeah, hole. not it's a very, standard body yep, shape. No. Interesting marquetry yeah. around the yeah. eye. You notice that? I, <laughs> I spend most of my day at the public library looking at <laughs> instruments I can't afford. So I <laughs> developed it. quite a good working <laughs> knowledge of the. Yeah. That was the guitar I, I learned uh, most. Most of what I learned on guitar, I learned on that guitar. Mm-hmm. And my dad one day was just like, "I don't think this is my guitar anymore. Mm-hmm. I think this Thanks, is yours." <laughs> yeah, that's so. what my dad did with his alcoholism. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take. I'll, I'll cheers to that. All right. <laughs> this is why you're so funny on stage. You always have to have a mic. <laughs> Zan I doesn't know. always feel that way. Yeah, I don't feel that way either. I'm a second. I believe you told me twice on stage on Sunday to quote, "Be quiet." <laughs> I don't Wait, what? That. We were playing in front of all my work like coworkers. That's a little different. But yeah. yeah, I was trying not to be like a you that. know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I want Michael to play with uh, with Silver Arrow at the weddings. Uh, no, it was yeah. very nice. Uh, anytime there's a live mic, baby, I'm happy to speak into it. <laughs> The audience doesn't. Somebody feel that bring way. a needle. Yeah, a needle <laughs> deflate that head. Of. It's funny because we've gotten to the point now where like I used to be the only one that was talking on the mic, and now like if I don't want to talk, I'll just be like, "Well, just say something," and I can just be like, "You guys, you got this." It really works. It's great. You, it kind of it works. There's like a a Muppets vibe to it. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, I like, take, like, take that as a like, huge compliment. Like you're like you're Kermit in a way. You're like Thank the straight you. man. You know, you're I'm the, you're the banjo player. You're the one. Hey, but yeah, How you're the banjo you. player, the but, but you're not. No, you're, she is Kermit. You're Kermit because you're you're like we're trying to put a show on. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> and every yeah, exactly. Everybody else. And I'm, everybody the, I'm Statler and Waldorf. <laughs> yeah, you're both of them. He's Fozzy Bear. <laughs> Perfect. And you're Gonzo, I'm, right? <laughs> well, I think that's a very accurate rec- representation yeah. of us. Because I am often... Wh- yeah. I identify I mean, you are, with you're Kermit a, the Frog. You I, are like, guys, we got it. This is great. I love that we're having fun here, but like, we got to go on stage in 20 minutes. And Kermit, that's what Kermit's doing. Kermit yeah. the Frog taught Kermit's me. right there. I know. I love Kermit. Okay. Yeah. I'm a big Kermit fan. I, I, uh, I just started following Kermit on Instagram today. Wow. As a matter of fact. Really? I, 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 yes. <laughs> got to give him a follow. I it's like modern Kermit, but Jim Henson Kermit is it, like yeah, the yeah, greatest yeah. Kermit. Yeah. And yeah. Jim Henson taught me how to deal with chaos of life, like wow. as a child. You sure. know, you realize, wow, everything's out of control, and I can't do anything about it. And I don't know, Kermit teaches that lesson pretty well. Yeah. So it works pretty well for. If I can be music. your Kermit, then. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You'll be the Kermit. Cause I can't I'll be, be the frog. Your Kermit, <laughs> if you don't. That's not our song. Can Michael. any of you do Why a Kermit voice? No. Oh, well, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> wow. Well, just what? uh, what? you know, I really don't really like Michael that much. But, uh, <laughs> That's not a Kermit <laughs> voice at all. No, I don't know what that. that was scary. Uh, I do love no. Michael. I Michael don't do a lot of impressions. Solid D there, Try. buddy. Solid I, D. Well, I can. I can't do Kermit. Kermit the Frog I used, here. Oh, I'm Kermit, Kermit the Frog, frog. here. I used Whoa! <laughs> bringing the heat over here. Yeah, you asked us to do more. I'm a big Kermit fan. Do more. Ready, guys? That goes to you, Chromoscope. <laughs> oh, yeah, Chromoscope. So you guys are doing everywhere. a thing with them this week. Tomorrow. Mind your business. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never do that. <laughs> what are you, a reporter now? <laughs> I know everything that's going on. Tomorrow. Yeah, we're really excited Tomorrow. about that. Troy Dance Factory. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we are, like, it's overwhelmingly amazing. Yeah. What am I going to wear? 
I don't know, blue? <laughs> but, yeah. uh, <laughs> blue. I think I'm going to wear new jeans that I got at Rodino's. I believe you're supposed to wear a leotard. Yeah. I got to wear that cowboy hat, I right? will be wearing a tasteful be pair of assless chaps. <laughs> so this music video that we <laughs> Yes. Yes. <laughs> so you're doing a music video. I'm just being Kermit over here. With, I'm sorry. Yeah, very good. Perfect. <laughs> with dancers. Hey, guys. Come on. Right? Yes. <laughs> with Troy Dance Factory. Yeah, so Nadine of Troy Dance Factory um, asked us. She does the, a local music series where she does a uh, choreographed dance to a local song every summer. Mm. And we were honored that she asked us. And, like, literally, I was shocked that she asked us. And uh, the whole summer, her class has featured our song, Alone, which is off our latest EP, How to Be Alone. Available on Spotify and wherever music is consumed. <laughs> zoom, zoom. That reminded me of Josie and the Pussycats. I don't know if you've ever seen that movie, but that was. Just I believe like my that. sister made me watch it once in our youth, but I don't okay. recall any. Anyway, <laughs> Josie and the Pussycats. It's is that where the they, one with the bomb on the, the bus, or is that the? No, they have movie? a band, and like there's, they keep putting subliminal messages underneath their music, and they don't realize. Um, but that was a really good promo. I liked well. that. Um, so, so yeah, so basically, um, they she choreographed this beautiful dance to this song. And normally Chromoscope comes in and does like a minute clip with the uh, for them, like for promo for them. Um, but we decided that we want to make a mu- like a full music video out of it. Um, so we're going to be we will be in the video with the dancers. And um, Nadine and I created like a tiny dance together and it was just really fun. And that's so um, cool. And so we f- we uh, film it tomorrow. <laughs> we're so excited. <laughs> we'll it's let you know how it goes. So it's, that's a good it's song to do for them to do. Yeah, she, she doesn't normally do like it's a slower song. She doesn't normally do that. Um, yeah, but she seems very influenced by what songs are about, mm-hmm. and there's enough in that song to have a sort of theme go through it. You know what? It, what am I making any sense? No. Yeah, I'm, I was rolling my eyes because Michael has asked me to pour him whiskey <laughs> four times already this podcast. Do time. you want to <laughs> switch chairs? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, no, I like, it, uh, the, I like the Ice Man, man. Uh, yeah. No, Richard I completely Kripleski. agree. Actually, it's funny because um, people always ask me, who is this song about? But no one really ever asked me, what is this song about? And that's what Nadine did actually at Little Pex, which is uh, our... No, I think that's enough. He's fine. Uh, <laughs> what is this song about? Uh, that's a better question, actually. Well, so she she sat me down and she was like, I need to understand what this song is about. Tell me as much as you can. And basically for like 45 minutes, she like pulled it out of me. And I was like, holy shit, I didn't even realize that's what the song was about. So she was able to take what I said and create a dance because of it, which You're to me is me like, now, yeah, did you like how I just kind of passed yeah. that? <laughs> <laughs> no, smooth as silk. Yeah. I'm trying to think what I think it's about. Because I think what is it about is just a better question. Because even if it is about a specific person, it's not really... You know, like mm-hmm. the, what people are connecting to is not that person. It's they the don't emotions. know that person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's a it's about what happened with that person or what happened to you with that person or which is a more universal thing. You know? Yeah, I think that's one reason why I don't always like to go into what my songs are about is because I don't want it to necessarily lose that. Yeah. Um, like, like books have always been like my th- thing my whole life. I've been a huge reader and I don't always like to read like what the book like what the author has to say about the book because i don't it t- it's going to take away my own experience i don't want to watch the director's cut of a movie because i don't i don't give a shit what you the creator tried to do right <laughs> it, it's what i wanted for myself so for our songs i don't want to take that away and maybe it doesn't but i think give me a favorite lyric from that song or it doesn't have to be your absolute favorite just like i listened to the whole album today so okay uh well um the whole EP like four times. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> did you do that on Spotify? We're trying to get our Spotify listens. I did. Uh, <laughs> I did listen. On Spotify. Uh, well, before I can listen think of a favorite time. lyric, I, it's cool about the song because it it builds onto itself, and there's a lot of like. I think it was the first time we really had to actually listen to each other. Like that's we really pride ourselves on being able to listen to one another when we're either writing or playing together, and I feel like this one was like, okay, we really have to think about this song strategically it feels it echoes like a punch brothers feel because i feel like they are like this gorgeous group of god they're all just gorgeous men honestly uh but gorgeous group of men that create like music they work really well together i feel like this song is our first one of our first times that we were able to do that um Hmm. i don't know i need to listen to it again 
So with the dancer, we're, we're all acoustic. We're all acoustic. We'll take a pause on here and let's. Like, yeah. I played acoustic on the on the EP, and it sounds like um, I it's like more of like that acoustic sound of sort of soundscaping sort of song. I yeah. wouldn't say that's like that's what the song is by any means, but we definitely incorporate elements of that, and it just as yeah. you know, the way that Zan's lyrics are so, uh, you know, I know like are personal but lend themselves to for everyone to like have related to a little bit maybe all of it yeah and you just and like we're just trying to create the the mood in mm-hmm. that yeah and, yeah. and it it's amazing especially yeah. for me to have like written that and then for them to be able to take it and transform it to me like is it's a overwhelming and yeah it's just very beautiful on my side <laughs> so i have one of your songs stuck in my head and i can't so i can't hear Hello. What song is stuck in your head? Yeah. I'm bad at names. Sing it. No. (laughs) Give us something. Come on. (laughs) That's not fair. (laughs) Uh, I think it's. It actually might be the first song on the first album. Uh, In the kitchen. kitchen. It might be that one. If I spend no, the let me do entire it. day, <laughs> if, I if I spend the entire day, day locked inside yeah. my apartment, yeah. that, song, that song's stuck version. in my head right now. I don't know why. That's so, well, oh, that's is, a banger, no question. Yeah, yeah that, that's one of our. But uh, um, <laughs> once in a while, I worry, worry that my mother never worried boom, boom, about boom. me. She always boom, said, boom, I know boom, you'll boom, be boom, fine. Boom, boom, that's a lot. Now I got it. Yeah. So that's that actually we just played the eye. Yeah, that was. Yeah, that was <laughs> off of my. That iPhone. was a live recording. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that song is a lot about like having pressure of. Basically, my mother had always told me she would never worry now about I remember. me. Now yeah. I can remember. So it's yeah. it's dealing with that pressure of kind of wanting to be a perfect person and and making the good right decisions. But what if you still don't know how to do that? Right. What if you need somebody to worry about you? You know. Ooh. So th- the dancers created this, or Nadine created this dance that these dancers are like, I don't it's just, uh, they're, they feel it and they're really echoing these, the lyrics and the music so beautifully. I just like, can't wait to see this video. Well, we yeah. ought to do it first, I guess. <laughs> I know. It's kind of crazy. That's happening. To my, like, yeah. We need, the, like, we really want to, we, we want to do something with Chromosco for a while, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're great. Like this. Yeah. Remember when we were talking to them and we were th- originally in the kitchen was like on the table as like a consideration for a music video. Yeah. And they had proposed, didn't they propose a kitchen? Cause I'm like, just like walking into your kitchen. I'm like, you've known them for a while. I wonder if they had thought at that time. <laughs> yeah. We're we going to go to kitchens. Jimmy's we kitchen. Should do it in your kitchen. <laughs> That like a good, that's a good one. Is that you a luncheonette? <laughs> There's a Jimmy's <laughs> lunch. I have a okay. picture of it. Jimmy's my... lunch. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So there's a lyric in what's the first song on the EP? Uh, what you do i'm sorry that i suck at names of don't things. i just i put it on i don't look at it i, just I listen I, to in it the same way i also have this thing where the first time i listen to something i cannot listen to the lyrics i have to listen to the song okay and see how it hits me based on sound cool and then i can pay attention to the lyrics i've just learned that about myself that it, if hmm. i have to do that i don't know what i do actually and then yeah. i will think about it now when but, i go well, i mean i do I that with conversations you know when the first <laughs> song i went just the tone of the voice I'm taking it to. I don't care about the details. <laughs> but the, you have a line in that song that that's a like, I need a man, but like you kind of turn it. You, it's like, there's lots of songs of men saying, being like, I need a woman, like mm-hmm. I need, I need you, and for some reason it's harder for women's songs to do that without it sounding, I don't know, like dependent. You know what I mean? But yours, your song kind of throws that over on itself because it's, I need a man who can do this. Who so can like? I am a woman who stands strong and tall. Yeah. And I need a man who can handle it all. Yes. Yeah. It's supposed to be like. You best step up, It came up, out homie. of nowhere. The yeah. song almost never got recorded ever. Um, but yeah. When did you write that? I wrote is that, that a pre-band song? Or yeah, I wrote that driving to Buffalo. So, you know, I had five hours to kill. Yeah. Uh, uh, and and you do that a lot. You, yeah, I wrote you write it in a lot car. of songs without an instrument. In your yeah, mind. I'll just like right. have a melody, and then I got to my best friend lives in Buffalo, and I wrote it on her kitchen floor. What I mean to say is, a lot of songs from the female perspective, when they're saying "I'm strong," mm-hmm. is I don't need anybody. Yeah. But that allowed you to say, "I do need somebody. I need people in my life, and mm-hmm. it, but I need people who can deal with all this." Yeah. You know, like I'm. I'm, oh, this, I'm baby. Str- right, right. <laughs> I think I think I think that's in a way stronger. 
Thank you. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. I appreciate that. That song actually came out of the frustration of being with somebody who was going back and forth with like, I want to be with you. You know, I don't want to be with you. I want to be with you. I don't. And I was like, I can't take this anymore. This is what I need. <laughs> um, but there is a line in there that said, you know, but I wanted you, you know, like mm -hmm. that, that's one of the parts. So mm -hmm. I think I questioned my strength in that song, but yeah, yeah. the songs are very, they're, they're not one dimensional. I don't think that. any of your songs are one dimensional. <laughs> yeah, they're, that's what I meant by even when they are melancholy. Yeah. They're not. I think I'm well, I'm a writer first and yeah. then a musician. And I really pride myself on working hard on lyrics. Mm. And I, I'm not fond of lazy lyricists. Uh, and I get a little frustrated with them. <laughs> uh, I won't ever say. We talk who, about that a lot we in talk the about car that a lot. on the way to gigs. Yeah. Um, well, because it's it. like you know it's who's it's, a lazy lyricist we no, can't wait. we're not in a position to name names <laughs> what okay of? let's 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 leave the local like give me a give me an example of a, um, oh but the luck is what i want to talk about <laughs> <laughs> i'm not listening to a, a lyricist that's not good yeah if, yeah, not. if we don't uh, like yeah. it we don't listen to it let's Glenn talk Fry. just just don't take it for granted <laughs> you know think about your words think about your choices oh no that's and, a perfect sure. example you know. i will say i think the eagles are super lazy lyricists <laughs> i think a lot of the Peaceful, easy feeling. That's trash, brother. I don't care how much we'll jump like. out I that mean, window, bro. What a uh, hashtag snooze that is. Like if you if you what didn't if the song wasn't there, if you read that on a piece of paper, you would throw it in the garbage can. But who wrote that before them, though? Oh, friend? you're right. You, you know, know what? The lyrics of peaceful, easy feeling. That's not an Eagles. <laughs> yeah, that's not. The Eagles Bad just example. put music, yeah, beautiful music to it. Wait, can we all stop for a second? Listen to the crickets. They're, I was I was listening to them. Who's breathing? That's Mike, I think. <laughs> 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 That's pretty cool. It's the first time I've left the door open. I think you're yeah. right here, Mike. I like it. This is a nice place you have. Yeah. Thank you. You want to do a little ASMR before before we end this? Yeah. <laughs> should I should I just eat this piece of brisket? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Jesus. You guys are gonna love this. Right here, hold on, hold on. Fuck you, Mike. <laughs> ah, this is crazy to listen to right now through the headphones, right, Sam? <laughs> Do you like this, Sam? No, I like. I didn't know what it was, and I've then a couple months ago, I looked it up, and <laughs> it just doesn't do it for me. <laughs> wow. That didn't do it for you? Uh, no. What haven't we covered? One of the questions I was going to ask you on this podcast, I don't usually have questions ahead of time because mm -hmm. it just doesn't it doesn't feel natural, but I had, was curious because of the tuning thing. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned it on stage. <laughs> every time. In and that George. is a real thing. If there's anything yeah. we talk about, every show is the banjo tuning. tuning. It's yeah. banjo tuning. Yeah. Well, because you're, you're kind of stuck. You You have to. Yeah. yeah, well, uh, that's one of the things that most excited me about discovering the banjo, and it's also something that is a curse of the banjo, yeah. you know. It's one of the hardest instruments to keep in tune, but it's also one of the most versatile instruments because, like, standard tuning is an open chord, and there are so many, if you move one knob a little bit and one knob another little bit, you unlock a whole nother sonic zone yeah. of home chords, you know. Can you use uh, a capo on? Yeah, hmm? sure. I But it's a, th so... The problem with the banjo is you have that short fifth string. So you yeah. can use a regular capo. Like I, if in a pinch, I can use a guitar capo. But then on there, you still need to do something to that fifth string. So like when I first started playing with this band, I had a shitty banjo that I hadn't modified in any way. So I would literally take a Bic pen and cut up the cap to a Bic pen. I can't pen. tell you how many times a Bic pen would fly across the room and everyone's, yeah. you'd be like, everyone stop. And just kind of use it as, I got, so I you, you can capo that. the neck of the instrument, but then you have to capo the fifth string separately. <laughs> and my cheap solution is cut up a Bic pen that kind of fits over the fret and then it I'm raises like, who has a string. Bic pen? Yeah. Like, and I would literally have to say that into a microphone. So I'm like, does anybody have a pen on them that I can cut off right now isn't it easier just to find a capo um well there isn't so yes there so you're still using a guitar capo on the four strings that aren't but then with a five string banjo it's four standard strings and yeah. then the fifth string is higher up on the neck so you got to capo that separately it doesn't Can't match you just up, tune you know? it? 
Uh, if you want your string to snap and take your oh. eyeball, yeah. Got it. Um, <laughs> so we try to work around. Uh, the but there, there are a number of different things you can do. There are different capo solutions. What I have chosen to do, and I think what most banjo players do, is um, you buy model train railroad spikes. Uh, and then you nail them into the fretboard, and then you can tuck the fifth string under. I'll show you when we go inside. On the back I have of the fretboard? With me. Uh, yeah, like uh, on where the fifth string sits, you like nail them into the fretboard at certain frets, and then you can like pull it quick and tuck it under, and then it's like you're putting your finger on that fret. Wow. And then you use the capo. I'll show you when we go inside. I remember when you told me about that, and I was like, yeah. whoa, that was like a crazy thing, yeah. Banjo. <laughs> but it is the easiest. There are other <laughs> solutions. It has but to be railroad spikes, too. Yeah. From yeah. model train. So Hopefully just, they yeah. stay in business. Just fits the Banjo. Yeah. But You'll see when I, yeah. Wow. Um, But that is a huge pain. Like, the tuning thing sucks. And that is, for real, I wish somebody would give me $10,000 so I could buy five more Banjos yeah. and then have them all you in every tuning that I want. So I don't have to think about it. It's weird because the biggest pain in the ass usually for a band is the drums, yeah. the drum kit. But you have a banjo, which is a pain in the ass for tuning, and you have a giant double bass to carry around. Yeah, which is a pain in the ass for showing up. Yeah. How do you fit that in a vehicle? <laughs> I could fit it in any vehicle other than, uh, I, I guess, I guess a small 1987 Toyota Tercel. Can you do it? <laughs> Is this good? Is this going yeah, well? Yeah, are you good? <laughs> it's going fine. Are you going to use that last half hour? You want to talk about aliens? Mikey love talking microphone. Yeah, you're going to Area 51. You're going to Area 51? Mikey love talking microphone over there. I mean, I, believe, want... I believe in aliens, but I yeah, don't but think you know we'll the whole, ever meet them. You know the whole yeah. air, storm yeah, Area yeah. 51 sure. thing? Yeah. You're going to go? No. We're going to try to play you're not gonna, a show. Uh, what is it, Naruto? Uh, well, I did hear they're trying to turn it into a music festival. I mean, if somebody calls, yeah, we could play they're going to pay for our room. And I board. hope it I'm becomes a go. very yes, memorable moment in our um, American history. <laughs> I do, too. <laughs> um, but, you, I mean, honest to God, guys, you know what I think is there? Airplanes that the Air Force doesn't want us to know about. I don't think there are any aliens. I don't there. know. I've been watching a lot of Chernobyl, so I'm just kind of sure. – I have half of one episode left. I'm not Ooh. finished tonight. You didn't – yeah. So they're all time. inept is, is – yeah, uh, so it's hard. It's yeah, hard. I, I don't think the government could keep a secret that good. They have. Really? Like what? Like ancient aliens. <laughs> if we're listen, I'm tired. So if you want to get weird, I'm gonna get weird. I'm gonna ancient <laughs> aliens, like Egyptian aliens. Do you believe in that? I have thought about. I it. don't know <laughs> if I wanna. I don't know if I wanna find out whether you believe in ancient aliens because I already know some of the stuff that you believe. And like, ooh, 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 wait, like what? Get, let, let, let's <laughs> yeah, go into what that. What was that going to be? Well, no, I don't want to do this. <laughs> I want to have a pleasant ride home. <laughs> I want you not to have a pleasant Xanthic's ride Xanthic's ghosts are real, and I think I that's won't. crazy. I well, mean, that's what, if, what, crazy. What, what, what if they are real? I think it's selfish for you then to think I'm they're wrong. not. Well, and I'm wait, fine what, with what that. What do you think they are if they're real? Is it actual the people? I think it's like I don't spirits. think they're real. I don't know how to answer that question. Do, okay, what do you what do you what do you think happens when you die? I <laughs> I'm going to bed. <laughs> good good question, Jimmy. Let I'm me tell off. you. <laughs> so I think uh, Jimmy, I mean, I don't I'm a man who thinks about death a lot. Me too. You know, I grew up in a cemetery and I um Did you really? Yeah, yeah. he he lives across the street. His his childhood home across the street from uh which uh, cemetery is it? Uh, New Mount Ida Cemetery in beautiful yeah. Troy, New York. Mm. Yeah. Um, Where we, I, there's a YouTube video. Th- it literally is my front yard. You know, like Aren't I, there famous I, people buried in there? Some, yeah. Mind your business. <laughs> um, but Show I, some respect. It's a question I think about a lot, and it's something that I don't have a definitive answer to, and I'm comfortable with either answer. Okay. You know, I think there's more than two like, answers, like, but like I think if there's nothing, that's fine, and I think if there's ex- something, I'm excited to find out. This is what I think ghosts are. Okay. You ever met somebody who just like their personality is very predictable? Like they just you know how they they live their life, they do their life. I think ghosts is the energy of that just sticks around, just keeps uh-huh. the part of them that is mechanical, and isn't very conscious, just keeps doing it, just keeps. That's why ghosts are always like. In People stories. are locked into their routine. Yeah, they're always just like yeah. doing the same Because it thing always again, is you know? like, oh, like, this woman so in like, the white dress and she's just refilling the candle. Oil exactly. Or and it's yeah. like it's yeah. like the unconscious part of you, that energy mm-hmm. just sticks around and just keeps doing it. 
I don't think it's them like as a person. I think it's some energy they left behind, some remnant of them, like just kind of sticking around. That's really interesting. Well, that's but, like when I saw we, that ghost that I don't believe remember. We t- on, I uh, I tried my hand at a, a scary story on tour. Remember some ghost story? Which you one? mean the Norwegian tours? I was like, <laughs> yeah, the oh, Norwegian the tours. Uh, the there was about it was like a Pinewood Cemetery it's story. That's night. not very good and doesn't make any sense. But Pinewood Cemetery, you're familiar. Pinewood yeah, it's Cemetery. like the Seventh Circle of Hell or whatever. I grew up there. Seventh Helix coincidence. <laughs> 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 uh, no, nah, I, I love hearing like g- people's stories of like real ghost encounters. Uh, I don't believe in ghosts per se, but yeah, like I like that. That description, so one ghost story um, that my dad was, like, saying from a job that he had worked at, like, a private house on Lake George, only like, very cool house, and I've been there, and I thought about it when I was there, but it's, like, a, a woman at the top of these stairs just, like, kind of beckoning you up the stairs, oh, and, and there was, that. like, the story so where, like, creepy. this family, the family told, the family told my dad this story, and he was about to stay there and, like, work and stuff, and... He, uh, it's like the ch- one of the kids like got off the boat and just like went in the house, you know, kind of as kids do, and then came back and said that there was like a woman at the top of the stairs, and it's terrifying. Y- yeah, but and like, the, so recounting it to like the adult, yeah, and exactly. I, I've always to, thought about that story yeah, where it's like the that. childhood innocence sort of thing and like the belief, especially oh. then, and like you're probably not gonna remember, eventually. Yeah, as you a- get older, but in that story too, that is someone. It's just like you could see that it's like in a house it's like oh you got to come up here and check out the view right now from like it's just what she did this was this is something. who she yeah she, and the she, kid the kid described it and the story described what she was wearing like some like sundress or something and like very uh, distinctive dress to this person like the adult this child recounted it to and i'm just like as a guy who doesn't believe in ghost stories and i stayed at this house and i i thought about this and i didn't have any account but maybe it's because of my own sort of stubborn That's i don't weird. believe in ghosts i would have seen it and i would have hated it <laughs> but you you do get i have gotten spooked you know or you get spooked where it's just like a feeling and i don't know i don't know if i can like sure. if I, i'm more in the camp of like it's your own self you know and it's like i've seen horror movies and shit you know <laughs> like and it's just like i'm just doing this doing this to myself doing this i mean i've said to you i saw that That's ghost and i don't believe in ghosts my you do- wait you saw that ghost, ghost? I saw a. I've, I have no other explanation for this other than ghost, but I don't believe in ghosts. So I, you know, I grew up across the street from a cemetery, and one day when I was a kid, I was walking over there, and there was just like an old woman with a dog who like looked weird, but I didn't think anything of it, and she like waved at me weird, and I waved back, and then I turned my head, and then when I turned around, like she was gone, and I looked all around the cemetery, and I couldn't find her, and it's like an open field. How, how you know? old were you? Oh, you know, twelve, thirteen. Yeah. My friend worked at a but golf course. But I'm sure course. there's she, uh, an she's just a sneaky ass old lady. Yeah. yeah, I wish I could remember all the no, stories. No, you think she was a ghost? I don't know. There's, you there's, don't like the tone that this you podcast don't like is taken. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen any ghosts? Um, I had one like pull my shirt up. You got touched? Yeah. That's like what do they call that in Ghostbusters? It's like a, a fourth degree <laughs> how interaction old are, or something. How old were you? This was like two years ago. Really? And I was really? like where? I, I was in Florida. My aunt was staying at this house, and she is, like, very spiritual. And she was like, I don't want to be here. Like, this is a very scary. Like, this is definitely a haunted house. And I was like, okay, let's leave. She's like, well, I have to wait for blah, blah, blah. Anyway, we wound up staying there for a little bit. And she's like, go explore. <laughs> go check it out. And there was this really cool library, and this man was a writer. And uh, it was an awesome library. And so I was in this library by myself, and all of a sudden I just felt something, like, pull up my shirt from behind me and oh. i just like booked it by a gal so i didn't wow. see anything but wow. it was like very scary what does that feel like it felt Are like as sure if somebody is happened? doing that like in real life what do you mean how does that feel like my entire insides dropped that yeah i guess that, i mean out? yeah what does it feel like yeah it was it was i mean i didn't i didn't enjoy it i i fully want i fully believe our spirits and i have like a lot of um, comfort with knowing that, but I don't want to be interacting with them because I, I get scared and spooked out. I like slept I, like I find, on my brother's floor for half of my life. <laughs> I find the ghost question interesting because I don't know what I think, but I think it tells you. Do, uh, Michael, do you think people are their brains? 
Are you a? Are you a? Are do you have a brain or are you a brain in a body? Do you have a body or do you have a brain? That's an interesting question. Uh, I mean, I think we're both, but I <laughs> would be perfectly comfortable swapping out bodies. You know, you would. So you. Think I think the the part of myself that I'm interested in is contained within the four walls of my skull. Got it. So you don't think there is. There is a. I think there's other stuff going on, but I think it's disposable. Whereas this is what I am. The physical, the material. Yeah. There's no metaphysical. No, I don't necessarily think there is no metaphysical. Interesting. I. Uh, it's a question I struggle. It's a, something I give a lot of thought to, and it's something that I've yet to draw a concrete conclusion. That I really want to you guys to smoke a ton of pot This right is now. what I believe. <laughs> Um, that's where this it's like I'm going. looking at this water pitcher. I'm like, that's a bong, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I, I think the part of me that is important to me is this. You know, okay. If that makes sense. Yeah, it does. And for the podcast listener, I pointed at my head. <laughs> <laughs> no, he pointed at his dick. <laughs> no, I mean, I think my dick is fine, but it ain't nothing to write home about, folks. You know, gets the job done. So, because I, I actually am very, I feel very strongly that I know, but no is a tough word because I can't prove it, that I'm more than a brain. K N O W. Yes. I know somehow. I don't know how I know. Yeah. I'm not trying to say I'm only a brain. I'm saying. What I understand of myself is this, and that's what I enjoy dealing with. Okay. You know? Yeah. I look forward to finding out. Well, don't look I forward mean, not like too hard. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, don't worry, guys. Though. i got big plans for my funeral. You guys are going to love it. What's going to happen? Are you donating your body to science? Just his brain. Uh, well, no. I, originally, I wanted to just be like thrown in a hole in the ground, but um, you know there are other options. Uh, I don't want to be cremated, really. Um, this is dark. Why are we doing? This? <laughs> my my, uh, my I, will. I already have my plot. Uh, I, I'm probably gonna cut all this out. Just so you know. great, <laughs> great. My my That's will is going to say whoever is most affected by my death gets to decide what happens because it's not about me. Oh, that's me. nice. Yeah. I mean, and that is what it's about, you know? Yeah. Thanks for coming, guys. Thank it was really you. a pleasure having you guys on. This is hella Thank fun. Thank you so much, <laughs> yeah. Thanks for this listening to good. our music this and stuff. This is usable? Stuff. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I mean, it's fun for me. This is so it's, fun. Can we come back sometime? Of course. Yeah. We'll yeah, have we'll questions for ghosts. you. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of fucking questions. I don't want to talk about ghosts. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Ready? Jamie. Yeah. Have a good one. <laughs>